So as long as you are working with exponents, you need to know the laws of exponents. You need to understand your laws of exponents. So these are typical questions that you are given 12 marks on question number four. Simplify fully. So everything that you're going to do is to simplify fully. Question 4.1. X to the exponent of three times X to the exponent of a two. That is X to the power of a three times X to the power of a two. Remember that if you have this condition where the bases are the same, X to the exponent of A multiplying x to the exponent of a b, as long this and this are the same, the bases are the same, you add. So multiply, multiply, add exponents. You multiply, you add exponents. So meaning to say this could be written as x to the exponent of a 3 plus a 2, you add. So that is x to the exponent 3 plus 2, which is a 5, just like that. 4.2, we are given the wall of this bracket being raised to the exponent of a zero. And we know that everything when raised to the exponent of a zero, that's a one. So meaning to say, in this case, we were just going to have a one. The wall of this bracket is raised to the exponent of a zero. All right. 4.3, we are dividing this time. It's no longer a subtraction. We are dividing. So it follows that in your division, as long these bases are the same, x to the exponent of a divided to x to the exponent of b, you subtract, you divide, you subtract. So this is a minus b. So it can also be written as a fraction like this. So this is still one and the same thing. We are going to subtract your exponents as long as these two are the same, the I mean, the bases are the same. So if we had to check carefully, we have got X and X, which are the bases that we are considering. There is X there, there is also X. These bases are the same. So what are we going to do? We are going to subtract the powers, which is the exponents. So this is equal to X to the exponent of three on top. This is your A minus this one. So this is three minus five. And we understand that, 3 minus 5 is going to give us a minus 2. And what is 3 to the x to the exponent of a minus 2? Whenever there is a negative, to remove this negative, this one that we are seeing here, just remove this by 1 over. Negative means inverse, the reciprocal, the inverse, that is 1 over whatever that you are given. You have removed a negative. So to remove a negative, it's 1 over that. So meaning to say x to the exponent of minus 3 is same as 1 over. I have removed this negative, so it's going to be x to the exponent of a 3. The moment you remove this, you put 1 over, which is a fraction. So this is what you're going to have. All right, question 4.4. 4. Again, we are to simplify, and in this case, there is a multiplication in the numerator there. You are multiplying then there is a denominator that you're going to consider. So let's start with what is on the numerator. Remember what I said, multiplication, you're going to add the exponents, all right? In this case, if the bases are the same, you add the exponents whenever you are multiplying. So this is it. Let us consider this aside so that we can properly see this. That is 4.4. We are given 2x to the exponent of 3y times 3x squared y like this, everything is over 12, x to the exponent of 6, y to the exponent of a 3. So let us start with what is on the numerator, everything that we are having here in the numerator. But there we are going to see that there is a part of x and also a part of y. There is this part of x here, there is this part of x. So considering the bases which are the same, which is the base of x on its own, and also considering the base of y on its own on the numerator, and also whenever the exponent is invisible, or like this, you do not see the exponent there. The exponent is there, the power is there. There is a one, whenever it is invisible, there is a one. So let's multiply the numbers two times a three. You multiply the numbers together, that's six. 
You move on to x, you take the x as it is. Since you are multiplying, what do you do? You add 3 plus a 2. So if you add 3 plus 2, that's 5. Then we move on to the y there. You add again because you're multiplying. The bases are the same. So you add 1 plus a 1. So when the exponent is invisible, that's a 1. So that will be 1 plus 1, which is a 2. Everything over 12 x to the exponent of 6, y to the exponent of a 3. So this is what you're going to do at the end. If you are to consider this, uh, this is you can divide. Okay, the six is common. So if you divide this year by six, you divide here by six. That's six by six. That's going to be a one. Twelve divided by six. That's going to be a two. So you are going to see that here the, the exponents that we are given on top, it is smaller than this one that is in the denominator. So you can use the laws of exponents or you can just tell like this one. You can just do this. All right, this is going to be one on top. You ask yourself, remember what this means. It means X times, remember we talked about this, X times X five times. So they are X here, which are five. There are five of them. Here there are six. So if we cancel these ones, five, which are less into these ones, which are more, we, these ones, which are six, how many X's are we going to remain with? There is only one x which is going to remain. Remember, remember the way five like this x times x times x times x, five of them. That's one, two, three, four, five. And in the gym, there are six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So you're going to cancel this five, this one, to this one, to this one, to this one, to this one. There's only one x. The same thing with these y, these y's that we see. There are two here. Here, there are three. So if we cancel these two here, we remove them, these two, we cancel into these ones, which are three. How many will remain? Only one Y will remain. So in the numerator, you are remaining with one times a one, which is a one. In the denominator, you're remaining with two times X times a Y. So this is two X, Y. So that is how you can answer this type of equation. You just need to know your laws. Uh, you can also subtract from that part, which is still one and the same part or one and the same thing. You are going to have the same answers in that situation. Okay, if you are to consider we are given 4.5 P divided by P. All right, so these two are the same. It's just like P over P. This is going to cancel. That's a one. Or you consider to say you are dividing so what are you going to do? Remember, we said we subtract exponents. So that's 1 minus 1. So 1 minus 1, that's p to the exponent of a 0. And any number to the exponent of a 0 is a 1. You are supposed to know this. Okay? Do not forget your laws. 4.6, the square root of 25, y to the exponent of 16. Remember that the square root of 25, we are simply talking about a number that multiplies itself to give us this 25 which is going to be a 5. So that's a 5. Okay. Then y to the exponent of 16, it is the same like this. You, this is all you do. There is a 2 here. So this is how you remove this number inside. You divide by it on the new on the exponent. So it's 16 over a 2. So this is going to be 5. y to the exponent 16 over 2, that's going to be 8. 16 divided by 2, that is going to give you an 8. So what I'm trying to say is that if you were given this as the cube root like this, let's say it was the cube root of y to the exponent of a 9. So this was going to be y to the exponent. This exponent that you are seeing here inside here, you divide it to this one in them. You divide to this number inside of the root, this one. So it is going to be 9 over this number, 9 over 3. So that is y to the exponent 9 divided by 3. That is going to be a three. So that is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so this is how you could have simplified this one. Also, 4.7, we are given this time everything in this bracket being raised to the exponent of a three. This is what you have. The Everything is raised to the exponent of three. So what you do is that you just take this one to say there is a one here. So remember that if you're given x, Okay, let's say to the exponent of a, 
and it is being raised to another exponent b. There's an exponent again. So what happens is that these exponents, they multiply each other. So it will be a times b, which is simply a b. So it's x to the exponent of a b. a b means a times b. So this is the case. You are simply going to take this everything to the exponent of three. Everything is going to be affected by this three since there's a bracket. So that's one times a three, which is three to the exponent of a three. You move on to D. You multiply five times a three, which is a 15. You move on to E. E, there's a two there. So it's two times a three, which is a six. You move on to F. There's a three there. So this is F three times three, which is a nine. So that is what you're going to have. But remember that three to the exponent of a three simply means three is multiplying itself three times. One, two, three. Three times three, which is a nine. Nine times three, that is a 27. So this is going to give us a 27. D to the exponent of 15. E to the exponent of six. F to the exponent of a nine. There's nothing that you can do on this other part. All right, let's see the other part of our question 4.8, which is the last part of our question. They were given three x squared times, so this is a times there, 10 y to the exponent of a three. So just multiply the numbers in the numerator, just multiply three times a 10. So if you multiply three times 10, that's a 30. So this is 30 x to the exponent of two, y to the exponent of three, everything like this over 12 x, y to the exponent of a four. So if you understand the last case that we talked about that you can even like visualize, like you can, you can look into the question and see, okay, is there anything common between 30 and 12? Yes, the highest common factor, the biggest number that we can factor out between 30 and a 12. That number is a six. So we can divide by that six here. 30 divided by six, that's a five. 30 divided by six, I mean, uh, this 12 divided by six, that's a two. So you divide to the numerator, to the denominator. Again, by that thing of comparing, how many x's are we having on top? There are two, here it's one. So it's like x times x, everything over x. So this x and this x will cancel. So in the numerator, you are going to remain with one X. The same thing, there are three Y's here, here there are four. So if you cancel these ones, three into these ones, which are four, how many Y will remain here? It's only one. Or you can do it like this. Like I said, you can visualize this, or you can do it like this, Y times Y to the exponent of three means Y times Y times Y over, that's Y times another Y times another y times another y4. That is y to the exponent of four. So these ones, three, this one and this one, it cancels. This one and this one, it cancels. This one and this one, it cancels. You remain with only a y in the denominator like that. So what you do is that you multiply what is in the numerator together. So that is five times x, which is going to give us five x over two times y, that is going to be two y. So that's 5x over 2y at the end. This is what you are going to have. So these are the typical questions or these are exam questions that you need to know as you are preparing yourselves for mathematics for grade eight. You just need to be very, very careful in every simplification. So make sure that you do subscribe to, the, to this channel so that you won't miss any classes that we shall have from MedZone African Motives.